Hello, welcome to VMC, I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to be covering food trials, how they're supposed to be done, common um, pitfalls and misconceptions that people encounter, and what you should expect if your pet actually does have a food allergy. All right, join me, you'll learn something today. I'm going to give a brief background about common allergies with our pets. There are three categories that these fall into. The first is flea allergies, and it can occur that pets can severely react to one flea bite, that even if the flea doesn't stay on the pet very long. And so using prescription flea prevention is the first step if you have a pet that's having itching skin. The second category is environment allergies, and the most common one here is actually to dust mites. However, it could be to anything. It could be to pollens, grasses, flowers, other pet dander, you name it, a pet can have an allergy to it. Um, that is a very difficult situation to try to manage, and you do need to see a veterinary dermatologist if environment allergies are suspected. They are the ones who can test for specific allergens and then help with treatment plans to try to manage those allergies for your pet. The third category is the one we're discussing today, and that's food allergies. Now, this is a bit of a pain if your pet does have these, but the good thing is that once you figure out that's what your pet has, controlling them is actually quite simple. So if your pet is having skin issues or GI issues, there may come a time where your veterinarian wants to rule in or out a food allergy. The first thing you should know is that doing a blood test or a saliva test is not an appropriate way to try to rule in or out a food allergy. All these tests tell us is if the pet has come into contact with that ingredient before, it has nothing to do with if your pet actually has an allergy to that ingredient. Those are an entire waste of money. Do not do them. The only way to test for food allergies in our dogs and cats is to do a prescription hypoallergenic food trial. It is possible to consider working with a veterinary nutritionist in order to formulate a hypoallergenic food trial that you can cook at home. However, this is complicated. I'll link in the description a blog by a veterinary nutritionist talking about why feeding home-cooked meals is not ideal. Um, we have a lot of research that shows that there very commonly unbalanced. Even if you are working with a veterinary nutritionist, people might measure things wrong or make substitutions and within a couple of months, their pets are not eating balanced meals anymore and the health issues that arise from that are numerous. And so there, there are a lot of pitfalls with home cooked diets. It's also more expensive, it's more time consuming and there are also contamination issues here where if you're using the same things to make your pet's food that you use to make your own foods, you might contaminate their food trial with ingredients that are fine for a human but that aren't okay for your pet. Um, the last concern about home cooking is that then if in the future your pet ever has a medical issue that decreases their appetite and you need kind of an ace in the hole to get them to eat again, or if you're doing some palliative care and you need them to eat, home cooking can be fantastic for those sorts of situations where you really want to spark their appetite and you're not as concerned about having a balanced long-term nutrition because you're only expecting to be feeding this for a very short period of time. Um, and so for those reasons, using a prescription hypoallergenic food that is formulated for long-term use and that is guaranteed not to be contaminated is the gold standard. 
So there are two approaches to doing a food trial. One is considering novel ingredients, um, particularly a novel protein source. The other is using hydrolyzed ingredients. This means that the ingredients have been broken down into such small components that the body's immune system will not recognize them anymore and therefore will not form an allergic response to them. It's very important to note here that we cannot use any over-the-counter foods, not a single one, because we have research that shows us these foods are all just contaminated with small amounts of ingredients that are not on the label. So when the food is being manufactured, it might go through a machine that other formulas have also gone through, or perhaps when it's stored, there's contamination issues, or when it's even put um, into bags or cans, there might be contamination issues there. And so the prescription formulas are the only ones that we know have nothing other than what's in the ingredient list inside of the bag. Some companies sell limited ingredient diets to try to trick people into buying them. And this is one of the very common pitfalls that people get stuck in when they're trying to do a food trial. Those diets can't be used. It's a waste of your time and money. There are appropriate hypoallergenic formulas that you can trial to see what your pet likes or doesn't like from Royal Canin, from Hills, and from Purina Veterinary Diets. There are no other options. You have to pick uh, one of those three. While the food trial is being done, your pet cannot receive any other food items. This means no rawhide. This means no treats. This means no flavored medication. That means no flavored dewormer, no flavored flea prevention, nothing. We have to be extremely stringent during the actual food trial because that's the only way we will get an actual answer about what's going on. So everybody within your house has to be on board. You cannot have one person sneaking the pet little bits of their meal or giving them treats or feeling sorry for them. You can't go down that rabbit hole. Every single time the pet eat something that is not their prescription hypoallergenic diet, you have to start the food trial all over again. And you do not want to do that. People do say, okay, well, I have to have some sort of treat to give to my dog for the medications they need because they might have secondary skin infections from these allergies. And that's okay because we do have canned hypoallergenic formulas that you can either use as a meatball to get medication down or you can shape them into kind of dog cookies and bake them in the oven and use those as treats for your dog during their food trial. Uh, there are also some um, treat options that are made to complement these diets. And so you can ask your veterinarian if you can use that specific treat um, and your veterinarian will be able to guide you if that's possible for your pet or not. The other common pitfall that I see is the length of the food trial. You cannot blend your pet over to this prescription hypoallergenic diet and expect them to be fixed. Treating secondary infections is incredibly important as those contribute to itching. Your veterinarian will have to look at some skin cells under the microscope, check for yeast infections, check for bacterial infections, and if those are found, prescribe medication to treat them. Your veterinarian may also prescribe medication to help reduce the itching because we know that the food um, will take quite some time to see a full effect from. And so that's why the food trials have to last for at least eight weeks. At a bare minimum, you have to get through eight weeks. And there actually are some studies showing that there's going to be another 10% or so of our dogs that have food allergies that require 12 weeks to see a full effect from having their hypoallergenic food trial. 
So if your veterinarian is telling you that you need to do the food trial for 12 weeks, that is best practice. There are some pets that will have allergies to more than one of the categories we talked about before. So you could have a pet that has two allergy issues. They could have flea and food allergies, or they could have food and environment allergies. We even have some unlucky patients that are allergic to all three, flea, environment, and food. And that's a pain. <laughs> and it can make the results of our food trial uh, unclear. And so what the veterinary dermatologists tell us is that if your dog or cat improves by at least 50%, from how they were before. That means there is a food allergy component going on and they will need to remain on their prescription hypoallergenic diet. And then you can also start to work with a veterinary dermatologist to look into what the other allergies are and get some treatment options for them. Okay, so let's say you've made it through the 12 weeks of the food trial and you're wondering now what? Well, the gold standard is to actually blend back to the previous diet to see how much worse your pet gets. Because the change is gradual as they improve, it can be difficult to remember how bad they were before you started the food trial. And then when you reintroduce the items they are allergic to, then all of a sudden you really plainly see, yes, this is a food allergy. Um, so if you're a bit unsure of how much benefit there's been, that is what you should do next. However, some people say, look, my pet is so much better. I do not want them itching again. I do not want to go through that again. I understand that. And so for those people, we just stay on the prescription hypoallergenic food. When we have researched the specific ingredients that our pets are most likely to be allergic to, far and away the most common ingredient is the protein source. And so because many over-the-counter pet foods include chicken, chicken is a very common food allergy. However, it could be any protein source. It's, it's a lot less common for it to not be associated with the protein, but it is possible. And so once your pet has done the food trial, you could discuss with your veterinarian starting to introduce one ingredient every two weeks to your pet to see if they react to that specific ingredient. So some people find it helpful to introduce things like apple or carrot or cucumber, dog and cat safe vegetables and fruits that are less likely to be part of the issue because then that way you have a few treats that you know your pet is safe to be given. So if you do the food trial and there is zero improvement with your pet, all that means is that we have ruled out a food allergy component. And so now you need to see your veterinarian and you need to discuss things like uh, ruling in or out sarcoptic mange, doing skin biopsies or seeing a veterinary dermatologist for testing to look at what specific environment allergies might be playing a role for your pet. Please feel free to comment down below with any questions you might have or with subjects that you'd like me to cover in a future video. Please like the video if you've learned something today. It really does help me out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.